My name is Paul, welcome to the NBA GOAT channel, and yes, in my opinion, the 90s were a much better basketball era than today. And here are the main reasons for that. Reason number one would be that back in the 90s, we actually had some badass, borderline crazy players that would literally fight and risk serious injury for their team if provoked. Those players that I'm talking about had vibrant, unpredictable personalities they were honest and back then actually meant what they said and said what they meant. Players like Charles Barkley and Dennis Rodman, for example, made the game way more entertaining. In today's game, these same players would be viewed as cancerous and would not be allowed to be themselves. Today's NBA is way too politically correct and measured for my taste. Imagine Reggie Miller with his antics with Spike Lee. Choking signs? That would be an instant tech today, no question. And that's just one example. Those kinds of players made the game so exciting back then and created actual team versus team rivalries that were so heated everyone tuned in because you never knew when the next fight was going to break out. Crazy times. Just to mention, Dennis Rodman married himself while wearing a wedding gown in 1996. I think that also explains a bit on how varied 90s personalities were. Reason number two would be the dreaded load management. Imagine in the 1990s you're buying a ticket for an NBA game. You're finally going to see your idol on a basketball court for the first time live. You get to the arena and this guy's not playing. You're sad but figure he has a serious injury but no. He's not playing just because he doesn't feel like it. Or to put it correctly he needs to rest. A fan knowing that in the 90s would literally go crazy. The media would destroy that player and call them out as weak. You can't tell me that this would not be upsetting to you. These days, that kind of behavior is normalized. In the 90s, players were actually proud to play all 82 games. Players like Michael Jordan would not sit out unless had to. His legacy was set. He didn't have to play anymore. And he was playing through so many injuries that people didn't know about. I mean, he's playing on one leg. And this man do it at 40 years old on one leg. Like, come on, man. Talking about dedication to the game. Like, it don't get no better than that. The competitive will and great. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. Here is Magic Johnson in his own words. I hate it. I dislike it. Michael, I was just at Michael Jordan's 60th birthday party. He pulled me to the side. And you know, we talked about that for 30 straight minutes. <laughs> we couldn't wait to get out there on the court. Mm -hmm. It's about those fans who, like you said, pay yeah. their hard earned, earned money to watch you play yeah. this game of basketball. John Stockton, 16. Patrick Ewing, 3. Reggie Miller, 5. David Robinson, 4. Akeem Olajuwon, 3. These players that I just mentioned played that many seasons with all 82 games in their careers. If they missed a game, you can be sure it was because of a serious injury. It was just a different mentality back then. Today, weaker and lower standards for players have been accepted. Players are often immature and even Charles Oakley said coaching today's players is like watching daycare. It's more almost like a daycare. You got to babysit these guys to get them to do something they're getting paid to do. They're like, are you serious? Load management has become a stain on the game and shows a total disregard and disrespect of the NBA fans and the NBA has become so big that openly money and protecting their investment in players is way more important than respect for the fans paying their hard earned money to watch the games. Reason number three that I have to mention are the NBA rivalries we had back then. In the 90s there were so many great and physical rivalries. Not player on player, team on team. Listen to Sam Mitchell's story here compared to today's NBA. Man, when I say this, and BJ understands this. When I say <laughs> we hated the Knicks and they hated us. <laughs> we hated them. I was at a party in the offseason in the summertime in a couple of, in Atlanta, Georgia, my state, and a couple of Knicks players came. And I left the party to go get my boys because we were going to start a fight. He <laughs> the Knicks. Look, we used to sit in the locker room before the game. And this was our mantra. I don't care how many fouls you have in the first four. Anybody come to the hole, you take them out. Period. 
because our team was deep. Larry Brown could go 12 deep on our team. So we were going to take him out. And we had another rule. Every time they hit Reggie, no matter who it was, we didn't hit the guy that hit Reggie. We took it out on Pat. And we would tell Pat. Every time we thought somebody hit Reggie a little too hard, we come down on Patrick even harder. So <laughs> we hated each other and we knew the first team to 90 points were gonna win. <laughs> hey man, I, I didn't start liking guys that played for the Knicks. It had to be 10, 12 years later. As Sam just stated, one of those awesome rivalries were the Pacers and the Knicks. Fights, hard fouls, symbolism, and head games were awesome. We also had Knicks vs. Bulls, Knicks vs. the Heat, Heat vs. the Bulls, Bulls vs. the Pacers, just to name a few. Today's NBA doesn't have that at all. It's so much less entertaining because of that. We had so many intense storylines back then. In today's NBA, it's a story when Jimmy Butler comes into training camp in a weird hairdo. <laughs> Those rivalries back then were built on literal hate and dislike between players like Starks and Miller, for example. The mentality was to win at any cost, any means necessary. Pat Riley, while he coached the Knicks, told the team that they cannot allow anyone to come down the lane for an easy basket. If you can't block it, put the guy down on the ground. Reason number four is that back then, the game was way more balanced. Today. Half the shots in the game are three-pointers. The rest are drives to the basket and dunks through a matador defense. Almost no physicality. You view the video and you see players just moving away and letting the guy drive to the basket like a matador does to a charging bull. This is terrible. As Charles Oakley mentioned recently, players don't even want to work on their games. Back to the basket game and post-up game. They'd rather just stand outside and shoot jumpers. This makes the game so boring, even NBA players say the game has changed so much, it's almost unwatchable. You know what, coaching and, and, and the, watching NBA translates to a different space, Yeah, it was okay, but the guys didn't want to work on their game. Yes, they didn't want to work on their game. I'm good as a, I don't want to work on no post move, I'm shooting jump. I said, you never know what position. Be ready for the moment. Anything can happen in the games. The NBA, like you said, the game just changed so much, it's hard to watch. Reason number five, it's the game has just become super soft. That is also the reason that all these records are being broken and players have 70 point games in the same week. In the 90s, rules were being changed to protect players from getting seriously injured from very physical play. They protected offensive players. Fragrant foul rules were introduced and the offensive players were being protected because the defense was so physical and you could get really hurt. Today, it's the total opposite. I mean, look at this. We have a guy like LeBron James, who is the face of the league for the last almost 20 years. And not the main, but one of the main reasons, a rule like the anti-flopping rule gets introduced, protecting defenders from offensive players, pretending to get fouled. I mean, seriously, how weak did the league has become? to be forced to implement an anti-flopping rule due to millions of fans complaining about players like LeBron and others faking being fouled and stealing points that way. Now, these are the five main reasons I think that the 90s basketball was so much better. On the left, we have Michael and Oakley talking about today's players in depth and how childlike they are. On the right, we have a video of Detroit Pistons players talk about Michael Jordan after all these years. Enjoy and see you soon.